Hello and welcome to my new tutorial. So in this tutorial we are going to make some tattoos. So I'm going to use Mario but you will be able to follow along fully in Substance Painter as well because the technique I'm going to show is there 100% possible as well. So I'm also going to use Photoshop if you are using Affinity Photo that's also not a problem because the steps I'm doing is yeah they're pretty simple so yeah I think this is enough of yeah blah blah with me let's jump in. So as I said, we are here in Photoshop and this is a photo of me. So you can actually see my tattoos now. You could also use some images from Google, but things said, if you're using, if you're using photos from Google from a tattoo artist, you can only use them for personal projects. So if, if this is paid, this is, this is absolutely illegal and absolutely also not okay to do. And if you're going to use Google images, guys, really credit the tattoo artists. We're all artists and we, we want to support each other and please have the respect and credit the tattoo artist when you're going to use his tattoos in a personal project. So I think that's just fair, that said. So yeah, here I'm going to use my tattoos. So there should be not an issue at all. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make it black and white and we want to go and invert it because we have here the ink which is dark and we want to create a mask out of that so wherever it is white we can later paint the color we want in this example and we will paint black so we're going to invert that so the next step is with a new layer we are going to paint here black everything that we don't want to have included so this is just that we have a bit of a cleaner plate we can we can use so we don't need that and paint this one out so i'm using a more softer brush than we actually have a bit of a soft transition so let me bring away this window here cool here we go something like that cool so the next is we want to bring in here a curves. So we want to add a bit more contrast here because the way how it is right now, we cannot use it. So you can see here in the histogram, the black point is starting here. So we want to bring it there. So be careful, don't overdo because then you will lose all the small little shades in between. So just bring it to right on the start so that we can compare to where is raw skin, here black, it's the same black as we have here outside, which is 100% black. So we can fine tune them a tiny bit more by adding here a tiny bit more contrast. But as I said, just keep a bit of an eye on the small shaded or on the, on the fine shaded areas here. So we can bring it up a tiny bit here again. So this is just a bit fiddling around until you find some values that work. So surprisingly, the hairs are not a problem later, but this is actually already it. So let's make here this example as well again. So black and white, inverted, bring in here the contrast, uh, the contrast a bit further and we can make here a new um, layer and just paint it here black. So we don't need the arm and just paint it out. Here as well, so just a bit of softer fall off that we and we just can simply fade it off. So there's also not really something on the arm. And paint it out. Here we go. And then again, check here with, with, the, with the curves to get a bit the contrast you want. Probably we can crunch a tiny bit more, but that's basically it. So you can just save it down as a TIFF. I think JPEG should be fine as well. So they are anyway just 8 bit, so there's no reason to go for 16 bit. Then you just can export it and we hop over to Mari. So here we can see this is the Pixar teapot, which I have applied as skin material. Yeah, but it just looks funny. So I'm not going to talk about how the tea bag looks like of this, of this teapot. So I have your super basic simple scene with just the material here where I have here the skin created and we want to make here our part for texturing. So let's get rid of that and now let's have a quick look. So here I'm going for 100% black because I know that my texture that I'm going to use for, 
for painting the mask is not 100% white. So if you have values that are 100% white, that means you will have 100% of the color you're setting here. And if you then go for a value of zero, this will create an unrealistic result because nothing in reality is 100% white and 100% black. But yeah, since I know that my texture is not 100% white, it's fine with that. So I have it here off screen. So these are my textures and we can just bring in a paint node. I think in Substance Painter it will be just a new group and then make a new, uh, make a new mask. So here we go. So I recommend go and paint it in the UV view because then you don't have to deal with the distortion of the 3D viewport. And now we can actually grab here my tablet and we can start projection painting. So things said, it is a bit of a, of a try and error to place the tattoos a bit nicely. It also really depends on your geometry shape and the tattoos you have you want to paint on. So this is a bit of a back and forth, a bit of a try and error. So let's go in. So now we can see wherever it is white, we are now painting black. Or uh, no, we are <laughs> wherever it is white, we are painting white, which re re reveals the black color underneath. So that's how it is. Sorry. So we can probably go for something like that. I think that should be fine. We can also warp it here a tiny bit that it follows a bit nicer, the geometry. Oh, we cannot do that. But we can warp that. I think that's just about fine. Let's bake that down and let's continue here. So, as I said, this is a bit of a try and error and yeah, it really depends on your tattoo and geometry you have to come up with something that works here. feeling that is going to work pretty nicely here. Yeah, that's actually looking pretty good. So here we can actually erase a bit again to have here a nice ending. That's basically already the first step. So let's go back here to the orthographic view. And let's see what we got. It's looking pretty nice actually. But I found out that we have to blur it a bit. So this really depends on your source texture. If it's really high res and pretty sharp edges, then you want to blur it a bit more. But in my case, we don't have to blur it that much because we, we already get a lot of, of this soft transitional details. But I still found that they are sometimes a bit too sharp, especially that even if it's done by a, by a photo because we crunched a bit there in contrast, we probably have sharpened a bit the edges. So the best result is when we just blurred it a bit. In Mara, we are going to do that by introducing a new bake point, bake the paint data, and then simply add a filter to it. So done, and let's go for the filter, and the simple blur filter will do the job. Come on. Oh, Mari sometimes is so slow with this, <laughs> with this kind of stuff, so blur. And probably something like two will be just fine. And apply. And just one second, here we go. This is now blurred super slightly. So this will, will be just enough. So what I also found that works pretty well is when we bring in a bit of the underlying skin. And by do that, we just bring down the opacity a bit. So this is 100%. And then we just bring down a bit the opacity. So 0 0.9 should probably work, or 0 0.95. This really depends on your texture, how much of your information is there in the in your stencil. So the next step is sometimes you have on some areas, here's a good example, you have a more or less sharp line and Behind this line, you will get a bit of a, of a fade into the skin from the ink that is under, under your skin layers. And we want to mimic that as well. So let's go in here. Let's make a bit more space. So let's bring in a new merge node. We want to set that here to... Oh, Actually, the performance of Mar is so much worse when I'm recording. I think, yeah, the GPU is not so happy. So let's go to subtract because we want to use this guy here to subtract whatever we are going to do here. So let's bring in another bake node. 
because we want to get now a bit of a bigger blur. Here we go. Make that down again. Done. Filters. Blur again. Yeah, wait three hours to open. And let's go here for probably eight. And we want to have here a levels node. Go and clamp the output. Bring that here in. And then we should have it actually. Let me double check that I'm not telling bullshit here. No, that's it. So here I have already another node, another merge node where I have the color that you can see it a bit better. Let's go and make it something that is a bit better visible that we can see what we're doing. So let's bring that in. And this will be now a super subtle effect. So now we cannot see anything. We have to change here a bit the values in the levels node. Here we go. And we have to crunch that a bit more. So now you can see, we only start getting the outlines and you want to make sure that this edge is not going to look like that. This will not work nicely. So you want to be sure that the transition is super soft. And this is really in the end a very subtle effect. So probably something like that. This is really, this is, this is one of the details you cannot really see, but you will feel when they are not there. So let's go in here, black, and go back here to 100% black. And then also here, lower a tiny bit. The opacity of the layer. So this is really super, 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 super subtle. But trust me, I, I, I did some testing. I did some testing and it was looking way better when I had it turned on in my renders. So we also want to have that as a, as a mask. So for that, I have here already a teleport node and we can merge these two together. So with a new merge node, yeah, auto saving, thank you. We can bring this mask and we can bring this mask and set it to screen. So we get rid of all of the blacks and it's merged together. Bring it here in. And this is going to be piped out here to this channel. So this is simply a mask output where it is in the red channel. You could technically split the inner mask into the red channel and this super soft edge into the green channel, for example, if you want to have this control, but I found this was a bit overkill. So it was just working fine when I merged them together. And this is basically it. So as you can see, this is pretty straightforward. So this is the result. And as you can see, the hairs are not really visible. So probably depends on your source photo you have to paint them out or not but this is basically it so i've exported all of that and we can have a quick look on my look dev so here is what i got with my scene so you can basically ignore most of it this is just a displacement here and then we have here the mask that i'm feeding into my layer node here and here's the texture and then we can ignore that and we can ignore that because this is just dealing with the texture of the skin and here I'm going to color correct a bit my tattoo. So here I'm grabbing the mask. As you can see, it's coming from the red channel. And then it's going here into my layer. And this is going to be fed into my subsurface color. So what I did in my case here is just a bro brought back a bit or brought down a bit the, the, the brightness. So it became a bit darker. I desaturated it actually quite a bit and then I fit it in. So this also really depends on your skin color you have beneath. Uh, this really depends on the, 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 the color of the tattoo. This really depends on what source image you were using to create the mask out. So that's why it makes sense to set up the pipeline that you actually can do a test render. And then when you probably see, ah, it's a bit too sharp, then let's go back and blur it a tiny bit more in your Mari scene and export it and do a tiny bit of back and forth to create a pretty nice looking end result in the end. And yeah, to me, this worked actually pretty well. And yeah, so this was basically already the, tutor the tutorial. So it was actually a bit of a faster one as we usually have of about 20 minutes. So uh, we are here about 40 minutes. So yeah, as you can see, it's pretty simple and pretty straightforward, I guess. And mostly it's just a bit finding the right values for creating the stencil and then when you paint the stuff that you place it there a bit nicely and with the correct blur amount and then the rest is a tiny bit of look depth and then you have it so i think 
or I hope this was useful for you and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you can make now pretty cool characters or probably creatures with some pretty nice tattoos. So we see you in the next tutorial. Bye bye guys.